What's up Nightwalkers? Today I'm going over the DTNVS. This is fairly new, first becoming available for purchase towards the end of 2020. Now the DTNVS is manufactured by a company in Europe called Acton Black. You know, they're most widely known for the previous goggle to this one, which is called the DTNVG. Now DTNVG, that stands for dual tube night vision goggle, DTNVS, dual tube night vision system. You know, pretty similar naming conventions and that's because it really just sums up what it is. You know, it's a dual tube goggle. And so the, uh, the key differences, you know, between the DTMVS and then the NVG, and I'll put a picture up of the NVG so you can kind of see what it looks like if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but basically this one's been lightened up some and it's had some other features, you know, added to it or built into the design that weren't present on the DTMVG. The NVS's bridge, as you can see, it's been skeletonized compared to the NVG. Uh, the one thing that stands out is on the NVS, you know, you got these loops here to allow you to connect bungees to it. So, you know, you could take your hooks, like on your, you know, your traditional um, ops cord bungees and hook them right here. However, what I would do is I would take a split ring and then run your split ring through this thing. And so that way, if you got hooks or you got bungees with, with mini uh, carabiners or you got a lanyard, whatever you got, just connect it to the split ring versus going onto the loop. It runs off of one CR123A battery. It's good for about 20 to 30 hours of use, you know, depending on temperature and stuff like that. Uh, the power knob is pretty similar to a PVS-14 in terms of how it operates. And so, you know, you turn it once, turns it on, pull it out, turn it again, and that's going to turn on this illuminator, which is built in here uh, right there. Uh, this illuminator, it's like a lot of these things on these devices where it's not really powerful, but it's good for up-close stuff. The NVS is sold as two versions. There's the standard version without IPD stops, and then there's the version with IPD stops. You know, and honestly, it's the same exact goggle. I mean, the only difference is, is that on the back of it, um, if you buy it with the IPD stops, um, it's, it'll be installed for you. Otherwise, if you buy it and then you decide to add them later on, uh, you just put them on yourself. It takes no time at all. It's basically this right here. It's a plate, some backers, and some screws, and I'll show you how it goes. It's, uh, it's really easy to put on here. It basically mounts in here using these four holes with some backers, and it allows you to lock these things out because with traditional articulating goggles like these, you know, the way you line them up for your eyes is you just got to kind of get them in position, and once you find it, uh, you know, they stay put. However, if you articulate them up, once you come back down to your eyes, you just have to find that right spot. Uh, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, it usually takes, I don't know, a couple seconds or so. But what the IPD stops allow you to do is it uh, gives you these points here. And then you can basically, in one motion, put them back down to where they're supposed to go. The contents of the kit, you basically got your plate here that goes on the back of the goggle. And then you got some backers and then some screws. So you take this thing and you pop it in here to the, uh, to the back of the DTMVS. And so you can see the four openings here. Uh, that's going to correspond with the holes where the screws go. You know, it pretty much makes sense. Uh, the actual IPD um, arms, I guess, or stoppers, whatever you want to call these things, you know, they have to make contact with the monocular pods. That's how it, it functions. And then the backers, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. When, when you look at them, you'll see how they go. Okay, with the IPD system installed, uh, you can see the position of the backers, you know, right there on the top and the bottom. Uh, it really makes sense. Once you, once you do it, it's, it's really easy to do. It's not a big deal. And so the way the system works is you're going to rotate this knob and that's going to extend or retract out the part that actually does the stopping action. Uh, and so basically what you do is you're going to get these lined up for your eyes, you know, where they need to go. So you get, you know, one complete 40 degree circle. And then you're just going to extend out uh, the stopper until it makes contact with the monocular pod. And so what that allows you to do is in, in one motion, uh, you just get these down and they'll go exactly where they're supposed to go. Depending on where you buy these from, uh, you can get different selections for tubes. You know, at TNVC, you know, we offer these in unfilmed white phosphor or thin film green phosphor. Uh, these particular ones have unfilmed white. Uh, however, it's up to you for your budget, you know, how much you want to spend on, uh, on tubes. Uh, the rest of the goggle, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you're basically, you know, going to do all your articulating adjustments here on the bridge. You got your power knob, your battery, IPD stops. Uh, I mean, it's really a straightforward goggle. The articulation feature on the NVS is really nice. So, for example, uh, whichever uh, monocular pod that you rotate up, uh, the power is going to turn off on it whenever you get it past about uh, this position right here. And so if you do both of them, they'll both stay turned off. Um, then you're not going to have any light coming from the tubes, you know, potentially uh, backlighting or lighten up your helmet for people to see. And it's just a really nice feature. And then when you bring it back down, they'll turn on automatically for you. Uh, now, the DTMVS, it does have the ability when you stow it uh, for the goggle to turn off. However, uh, my recommendation is um, if you intend to have these things turned off and you want them turned off, just turn off the, the power knob. <laughs> don't. I, I personally just don't recommend ever counting on that um, to be 100% safe. Even though that, that these do uh, turn off and they stay off, my recommendation is if, if you don't want them on, just turn them off. 
And so that, that's the best bet to avoid accidentally, you know, burning tubes. Um, you forget that you didn't turn it off. And so you take them off of your helmet once you have them up in this position and set them down. Let's say they turn back on and you don't know that they, uh, they turn back on. That could be a problem for you. So if you have them up like this on your helmet and you're inside of a vehicle, let's say, uh, you have a much higher likelihood of smacking these on the ceiling. Um, plus uh, the weight distribution like this, you could definitely feel the weight out here and it could be stressful on your neck. And then having the ability to articulate them down, it puts the weight back down towards your helmet and it's really just a lot more comfortable. Um, plus, you know, if you don't need to have them stowed, it is a really nice feature to keep them up like this away from your face so you could use your eyeballs. And then the weight is really nice and balanced like this as well. These things are nice and lightweight. I've got the scale set to ounces and I have the battery installed inside of it. And uh, at 18.9 ounces, I mean, that's a nice lightweight for goggles. And these things are really well balanced. I mean, on the helmet, to me, they actually feel lighter than that. To wrap up the video, I think this thing's awesome. It gives you everything that you need and it doesn't give you anything that you don't need. Uh, the weight's nice on them, the balance is good. Uh, the construction of them, I mean, these things are really cool. I like the way they look. Uh, some people don't like the looks. Um, I think it'll grow on them. It's like a lot of things. Uh, personally, I think these are just bitchin' looking uh, dull tube goggles. Uh, the IPD stops are nice. Uh, I'm just really impressed with them. I think, I think they're great. If I was looking for a dual tube system right now in the market, I mean, this is definitely the one uh, that I'd, I'd be considering to purchase. Uh, one thing that's going to come up, so I'm just going to get out of the way now, manual gain versus automatic uh, gain control. And so the DTNVS, you know, this does not have gain control on it. Uh, there are some goggles out there, um, like the PVS31, which is the L3 Harris BMVD, or the 1531 uh, BMVD. Those have manual gain control on them. Uh, my opinion of it is on a dual tube system, gain control is really not necessary. And that, that goes for all the different uh, goggles I've used that are automatic gain control. In fact, the, uh, the GPMBGs I just showed in the last video, uh, those don't have gain control on them. So my opinion, it's just not a big deal. Um, now, if you're using a single device like a PBS-14, you absolutely need to have gain control for that in order for both eyes to kind of work together the best they can. This topic on tubes is going to lead me to the next part I have to talk about. Uh, this might get a little long, so I apologize for that, but I feel like I have to talk about it in this video if I'm talking about automatic gain control uh, to, to manual gain control. And that is the fact that uh, there are a lot of builders out there and sellers who are using the, uh, the wrong tubes uh, for, for these types of devices. And so what I mean by that is you've got two different tube formats when it comes to, uh, to Gen 3 tubes that are being used inside these. You have 11769 format tubes, which those have a pigtail off the, off the, off the tube that allow gain control. So, so PVS-14s, uh, those use 11769 format image tubes. And then uh, devices like, like this one, uh, these call for a 10160 format image tube, which is the tube that does not have a gain control uh, ribbon pigtail or cable coming off of it. And so what's happening is, is there's a lot of people out there, um, builders out there who are taking PVS-14 tubes, you know, the 11769 tubes, and they're basically desoldering that ribbon cable and they're soldering on a resistor to turn them into a 10160 tube. Uh, that's a problem. L3 Harris and even Elbit, uh, they've both stated that they will avoid any warranties. Now, this is like their standard two-year tube warranty on tubes that have been modified or converted to change formats. And so that's a big deal. You know, if you're going to spend this kind of money on something uh, like a DTNVS or other goggles out there, um, you, you know, you're going to be relying on the dealer to, uh, to handle any warranty issues if you have a tube failure or something like that. Now, the problem is, um, let's say the dealer modified the tubes, uh, something happens to them, you try to contact the dealer, they went out of business, whatever the case is. Uh, that's going to leave you to either contact L3 Harris or Elbit and contact them to see if they'll warranty the tube or just replace it out of, out of your own pocket you know, for a whole new tube. Now, um, if the tube's the proper tube and you contact them, well, of course, they're just going to warranty the tube within that within that, that two-year uh, warranty period that they have. But now if the tube has been modified, they're not gonna honor the warranty. Uh, they've, they've, both companies have stated that. Uh, make sure that you're gonna have these things uh, fully warranted within whatever warranty period is available to you. At the minimum, that would be two years on the tubes. Um, places like TNVC, we offer 10 years on the tubes, and then we offer lifetime on the housing itself. So anyways, the DTNVS requires 10160 tubes. So if you're looking to buy these things, whoever you're buying them from, make sure those are the tubes that you're going to get inside of this thing. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.